Hey everybody, welcome to the Wednesday live stream. We have a ton of stuff to go over, so let's just jump right in. Before we get into the main story, which is the SEC going after uh, the Ethereum Foundation and pretty much on a warpath to label it a security, uh, I just got this information. This is from my buddy Tom Crown. It just hit 100K subscribers. Congratulations, Tom. It looks like Jerome Powell came out and uh, said some pretty positive things. And of course, it's going to be higher for longer, but no rate cuts. However, the market responds by the non hawkishness and the very dovishness that uh, was Jerome Powell apparently on his speech today. And it looks like we've hit an all time high for the SP 500. Uh, so it must have been fantastic news. Uh, so that's my report as much as that is going on as far as the macro events. And of course, for the uh, crypto market, pretty much flat right now. In the last hour, we're down 0.5%. Let's, actually, let's just refresh it. Maybe it's caught up. Hey, look at that. 1.8%. <laughs> pretty good. 2.4. See, 10 minutes makes a huge difference in the crypto market. And it's not just uh, the lows or the highs, everything in between. BNB in last hour, 2.7, 6.5, 2.8, blah, 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 right? So a lot of things going on. Fantastic. Everybody's happy for the moments right now. Let's jump into the big story. Big story is this. And I didn't really pay too much attention to this this morning because I saw this came out and I was like, Ugh, here comes the SEC doing the same things they're doing again. SEC delays making decision on the Ethereum ETFs. Shocker. They're going to wait till May. And in that, that point, they're still not going to approve it probably. So that came out. I'm like, meh. Yawn. But then this came out and I found this interesting. And I I saw the first version of this. This, this is from finance. Uh, actually, the original was from Fortune. And Ethereum Foundation faces an inquiry from a government, from a government, a government. And that was it. There was uh, an inquiry from a government entity, and that was all. But in the last hour or so, it's changed to the SEC. And it talks about how after the publication of this particular article, Fortune reported the SEC seeks to classify ETH as a security. So before anybody flips out, just remember this. Uh, some people trade securities all day long. They're called stocks. They're on Robinhood, they're equity. Matter of fact, mat coincidentally, Robinhood also has cryptos. So it's just, a, it's just the, the process of getting to say, well, this is secure, this, isn't a, this is not a security. And the other process, of course, is allowing to see what exactly Gary Gensel and the SEC actually wants, because they're not playing by the same rules that they play with with everybody else. It's kind of like they're dragging their feet and go, yeah, come in and we'll talk about it, and then we'll sue the pants off you. Hold on one sec. Got to open up this green screen. That's the Marin. Okay, not fair. So this is what we got. And we'll go, we'll, we'll do a little deep dive with uh, a couple of people in the know. So after the publication of this article, Fortune reported the SEC is seeking to classify ETH as a security. The financial regulator has sent investigative subpoenas to U.S. companies in the past several weeks. I did not know that, according to the reporting. The Ethereum Foundation did not return a request for a comment. Well, no kidding, which makes a lot of sense because I wouldn't want to talk about it if I'm under investigation by the SEC either. That's just pretty much how it is. But in a further development, this is from Eleanor Terrett. You can follow her on X, great, good reporter. She's from Fox Business. According to a person at a company who received a recent subpoena request, the SEC's probe of the Swiss-based Ethereum Foundation. Remember, they're looking into the foundation, but we all know what that is. That's just code for, we're gonna classify you as a security as much as we can. This began shortly after the blockchain's shift to a new governance model known as proof of stake in September of 2022, which is quite interesting. And this was the article itself, links in the description. It's behind a paywall. So if you have a subscription to that, you can check that out. But this was a, a little refresher. And I like to, Crypto T over next, she's got a good channel. There's a lot of good information, mostly Bitcoin heavy. But on this one, she says, you know, she's uh, Ethereum focused on this piece. This was from, she retweeted this on 2022 and kind of catches everybody up. Because even me, even us in this space, I kind of forget the different nuances and details. So check this out. Again, this is on November 13th. And remember back then, FTX was collapsing and then we had Elizabeth Warren come out and say, all of crypto is awful. FTX collapsed with a fire under regulatory. Her sends, senators are calling for the SEC to enforce regulations. Ethereum switching to proof of stake had already put a huge target on its back. I remember when people said that, I was like, I don't think that's really true, but. <laughs> Apparently it is. And they said that they were making assumptions that uh, the Ethereum did actually did pass the Howey test. Of course, 
you, as a uh, as a VC, you want to not pass the Howey test because you do not want it to be a security. Investment, of course, the four prongs are this: investment of money in a common enterprise. You know, people working together. Expectations of profits. You know, you do something, I'll, I'll make some money. Derived from efforts of others. And that could be the marketing department. That could be the CFO, the CEO. Usually if you have a CEO, it's kind of a little skeptical. And if you pass, you're considered a security. And there was a nice little, I'm going to play this video. It's a minute long. It pretty much breaks down the whole thing that's, that's going through there. I want you to listen to this. This is actually pretty entertaining. And it kind of takes you as like a timeline of exactly what's happening here, what Gary thinks, and uh, it overlays with some little bit of, uh, of alpha. So just take a listen to this. This describes some crypto as securities. Which ones do you think of as securities? It's pretty clear, and the Supreme Court has actually spoken about this many times. Um, if, if somebody is raising money, selling a token. Start the Ether presale mm -hmm. in a couple of weeks. So the Ether presale will be an opportunity for anyone to purchase Ether. For Ether is the internal currency inside of the Ethereum system, sort of like okay. the XRP and Ripple. And the buyer is, is anticipating pros, profits. What we're hoping is, is that sort of similar to what happened with MasterCoin. If that slice is something, is something like 20%, and then the value of Ether goes up by five, then we basically have the, the entire init, initial BTC that we got all over again. Based on the efforts of that group. This About 100 people that are working on Ethereum right now. Myself while leading the, yep, the, the protocol design. And we also have branding teams. We have marketing teams. That fits into something that's a security. Partially in order to better flesh out, our, flesh out the business plan. Partially in order to better. All right. Then it kind of devolves. Look, I'm not here to pile on to Ethereum. I love Ethereum. I like it. I mean, it's kind of slow in some some regards, but uh, you know, I own it and uh, I believe that it could do quite well. So, of course, when we take a look at these things and just in its little cubicle of the information that we actually have, we can say, well, that makes sense. It's to totally a security. However, I'll remind you, I'm not a lawyer and I'm definitely not a securities lawyer. I don't know how many securities lawyers are actually watching this video right now, but if you're here, chime in. But that's not for us to decide. That's for the court to decide. And it's not even for the SEC to decide. It's actually based on Congress and what they say and the rules and regulations put forth. Now, if they think it is, then they have to bring it to the courts and say, this is actually what it is. And of course, the Ethereum Foundation can say, no, that's not true. Ripple said the exact same thing. And guess what happened with Ripple? Beat the pants off the SEC. So there's that piece. And then also, uh, I'm not gonna play this one. I, I think you guys know this one. Pretty much Gary says the exact same thing. He's like, look, this is <laughs> this is a security. Okay. But he said that about everything except for Bitcoin. And again, he reiterates that fact. But then T makes a good point. She goes, you know, people try to say Ethereum is a commodity, but I don't think the SEC will let that happen. The CFTC, they believe that it's actually a commodity and they want to have it under their jurisdiction. But the SEC is like they're fighting for this power struggle. And that's just how it is. And C says, you know, I love ETH and so on and so forth. So there's that piece and I can understand. But then this was put out by a uh, friend of the show, Guy over at uh, Coin Bureau. And he says, he goes, look, if the rumors about the SEC's move against ETH were true, which we know that they are now, then this exchange last year makes a lot of sense. They had always planned to do this. This is about three minutes. I haven't watched this yet. So let's see what, uh, what's going on here. The um, most popular digital assets and powers of the Ethereum blockchain. Uh, back in 2018, then SEC Corporation Finance Director Bill Hinman, Hinman uh, stated that he believed Ether was not a security. Uh, last month, CFTC Chair uh, Benham expressed his view that Ether is a commodity. Uh, the state attorney general of New York asserted in a court filing last month that Ether is a security. Clearly, an asset cannot be both a commodity and a security. Do you agree? Um, I, I, it, actually, all securities are commodity under the Commodity and Exchange Act. It's that we are excluded commodities. But I would agree that a security cannot be also an excluded commodity and an included commodity. I'm sorry, Chair, just to talk about the Commodity Exchange Act more precisely. Okay, so do you recognize...
Is, uh, how would you categorize Ether then? I think that the general sweep of what Congress did, not just in the 30s, but uh, as amended. I'm asking here, you, sitting in your chair now to make an assessment under the laws as exist, is Ether a commodity or a security? Without speaking to anyone. I know you've okay, repeatedly said you're not going to speak to one, except you've spoken to one, Bitcoin. So I'm asking you to speak to a second one, the lar second largest market cap here. And speaking to the tokens, there's 10 to 12,000. If there's a group of entrepreneurs in I'm the asking middle, about the one. public is anticipating a profit based on the- I'm asking you a specific question, Chair Gensler. I said this in private. This should be no shock to you. I'm asking this question. Is, it an e is Ether a commodity or a security? And again, it depends on the facts and the law. And if there's a group of individuals- I'm asking about the, the facts middle. and the law sitting in your seat and the judgment you are making. And so, uh, uh, Mr. Chair, I think you, you would not want me to prejudge because I'm also- But you have prejudged on this. You've taken, you've taken 50 enforcement actions. We're finding out as Oof. we go, as you file suit, as people get Wells notices on what is a security in your view, in your agency's view. I'm asking you a very simple question about the second largest digital asset. What is your view? And my view is, is if there's a group of individuals in the middle, middle that the public is All right, so let me just ask a second question then. Do you think it serves the market for an object to be, to be viewed by the commodities regulator as a commodity and the securities regulator to be viewed as a security? Do you think that provides uh, safety and soundness for, for, for the product? Do you think it provides consumer protection? Do you, see, do you think it serves the value of innovation? I think no should be a very simple answer for you here. I think that uncertainty is bad, is it not? And I think that Congress has said that there's one agency, the Securities and Exchange Commission, under this committee. And you won't answer my question, and you're the head of that agency. So give me a break. Come on. I'm answering it in the generic because. Oh, okay, this is boring. So anyhow, that's uh, pretty much where it went back and forth. And of course, Gary's going to say what he believes it to be true, but. In all honesty, no one really can say right now, well, this is a security, that's not a security. Again, that'll be for the courts to uh, to define uh, because, you know, as we've gone through this whole process, I believe a lot of the experts uh, would come out and say, Ripple's definitely a security. Didn't end up working like that. And then lastly, just to bring a little bit of, uh, of highlights here, this is from uh, guy Tony from Thinking Crypto. And he says, this is a storm brewing for Ethereum. Let's, recrap, let's, recrap, let's recap some important facts. Bill Hinman with Jay Clayton's approval gave a speech that ETH was not a security. However, he had major conflicts of interest because the law firm he was getting paid for was part of the Ethereum Alliance. And Power Oversight was able to get emails and communication showing Hinman was warned by SEC ethics office about these conflicts and Power is currently suing the SEC to get access to more docs. Ethereum switch from proof of work to proof of stake, which changes the thesis. Gary Gensler refused the state of Ethereum as security. We just saw that. Gary will most likely take the Ethereum ETF situation to the courts, potentially. Recently, CFTC Chair Rustin Benman spoke before Congress, highlighting the difference in view of the CFTC versus SEC on Ethereum being a commodity versus security. He believes it actually is a commodity. SEC and Gary Gensler approved Prometheum's license, which is one of those uh, centralized exchanges that's pretty much back with the SEC, to custody ETH as a security. In my interview with Aaron Kaplan, Digital Life Securities, new reports are coming out from Fortune Government is investigating the Ethereum Foundation and the SEC is looking to classify this as security. So look, if it does, and I said this many, multiple, multiple times, and I said, look, the only way to beat a bully is to punch them in the mouth. You're not going to get it by just placating them and just, you know, bowing down to them. You got to actually take the fight to them. And I said this a year ago. I said, look, Everybody should just band together and sue the SEC and have them get a judgment and move forward, right? That's why I was so happy with Ripple. And they kind of were back in the corner. They actually had to do it and they did a great job. We owe them, I think, a little bit of at least a thank you for doing all these things. So I see that what's happening. I see that it's just going to keep happening. I mean, just yesterday, we talked about a case that the SEC was involved in where essentially they lied under oath and they're going to have sanctions placed against them because of the lies that they talked about and uh, pretty much manipulated the court. And this is something that's far reaching. And it's like, these things happen and Gary's like, well, whatever, let's just keep doing what we're doing. And off we go. The only way this gets stopped is if Gary's removed. That's really what it comes down to. Because he's, I don't care if, if these have to go through and say, this is security, this is not a security, this is a commodity. Just give us guidance. Tell us what it is. 
tell us how to come into the office, to fill out the paperwork, to move forward. That's it. It's not what we're asking for. Anyhow, let me know what you think about that in the comment section. Let's talk about some good stuff, such as, well, actually, let me put the right screen up. That'd probably be good. Avalanche. So AVAX, which is another one of my holdings, and of course, in the show, you have to know if I talk about it, I probably own it. Uh, Alipay taps Avalanche for a Web3 powered voucher program. And uh, if you don't know Al Alipay, it's a uh, it's ginormous. It's 1.3 billion users worldwide. That's uh, an amazing feat. So Alipay didn't tap XYZ token, didn't go to meme coins, didn't go to this or that Avalanche. So that's I'm gonna guess they did their own due diligence. But here's what they did. So the proof of concept or the POC will allow brands like Alipay Plus stores to test Web3 solutions, including how they can help merchants foster new forms of interaction with users, helping to retain them and generate new revenue streams. Avalanche highlighted the program is still on the first phase of its POC or proof of concept stage. But just so everybody knows, Avalanche has been building its ecosystem in 2024, parting with uh, big stuff. On February 20th, they partnered with, I didn't know this, Sports Illustrated's ticketing arm, SI Tickets. Then on March 11th, Avalanche uh, partnered up with the role-playing game Maple Story, which will expand into an Avalanche Summit, which I hear is a very big Maple Story, offering content generation opportunities to users. And of course, if you're into the gaming Web3 aspect, you know how big Avalanche is going to be and how much they've actually put forward. So again, this is positive news. I like to see things moving in the right direction. And then on top of that, here's another story I liked. Uh, DC coffee chain debuts crypto payments with Coinbase. Because there's always like a little joke about Bitcoin. Well, you can't use it for to buy coffee. Well, that's true. You got a point. Which I guess you use Lightning, but uh, I don't know how, how well the adoption is going. Well, now they're going to be able to do that with a stable coin. At least that's something. And when I read this, I was like, wait a second. Are you talking about USDC on Ethereum? Good luck with that. And I did a little test and I'll show you how this all worked out. So this is the story and I'll get to the test. Compass Coffee, veteran-owned coffee brand with 16 store in DC, partnering with Coinbase to offer customers the option to pay for this morning brew with USDC. And I read this, I'm like, who's gonna do that? Why would they do that? Why would you go through all the trouble of doing USDC, use Ethereum layer one and actually pay for it and then have these ridiculous fees? It makes no sense. Well, here's why. On Wednesday, customers who pay with USDC at the Half Street location will get 90% off their orders, which hopefully that does well, as well as a NFT that can be used to redeem for a free coffee uh, with Coinbase and the Compass logo. So I'm like, oh, that's pretty cool. But it, get, it made me think about, again, about, well, this is great, you know, real world use case, but I've used USDC on Ethereum Rails as far as layer one, and I've paid through the nose. So I'm like, how's this gonna work? Here's how it's gonna work. So if you go to on your Coinbase account, I don't know what exchange you have. I don't know if, what's offered on all the exchanges. I have no idea. I'm stuck in America. I'm not stuck in America. I, I love America. It's just that it has sometimes doesn't have the greatest of exchanges, but Coinbase is all right. So I did this and I said, okay, I want to send USDC. I bought USDC. This is on Ethereum layer one solution. I want to send it somewhere. So let's say I want to send it to this this coffee shop. And you know that right now when you do that and you click on the send button right there in the middle, right by, by receive, send, it's gonna ask you, okay, how do you wanna send this? And what rails do you wanna send it on? Do you wanna use Ethereum? That's cool, you can do that, but it's gonna be 10 bucks. You wanna use base, it's free. And I would assume, I would assume, I'm just guessing, that they probably set up the coffee shop with the layer two solution, which is base. You can also use Arbitrum, Avalanche, Noble, Optimism, Polygon. You can use Salon and everything else. So when I did it, uh, it there's a little thing that'll come up that said, hey, if you're going to send USDC, because I, I picked Salon just for the heck of it. And if you do that and you transfer over, which I did today, there's no fees. Well, it was like 0.0001 or something crazy like that. So you can do that. And that's great. And on this channel, we talked a lot about DEX is how I think DEX is going to be great. I mean, new best thing. And you know, of course, that's where if you want to get like the true degen stuff, you know, you can do that. However, when you go to like a Uniswap and you want to, I don't know, send some USDC, there's no option like that that I found. 
Now I could be wrong, correct me in the comment section, but it's gonna cost you like seven, eight bucks. And then also on my favorite cold storage wallet, which would be Tangem, I tried the same thing and the fee was eight bucks. So I'm like, I'll be damned. Coinbase is doing the right thing by having these ridiculously low fees. So I just thought it was interesting. And uh, if you have the option to use L2s, now that doesn't work every time, right? If you're trying to get into memes or meme coins and stuff like that, and uh, you can do that on Coinbase, but it doesn't offer all the different rails that you can have. So people will say, well, just use L2s. It's not offered over all the time. So it's only offered on certain cryptos in certain situations like USDC, makes a lot of sense. Anyhow, let me show the thing with that in the comment section. And this actually would lead me to one of my last points. We did a, a deep dive into Minutes Network. And this was this is on Dan DGen channel, which is where we go to like the more risky stuff. And one of the things that we talked about and people had this question was when you're doing, and it says here, the Ethereum layer for uh, the payments, like how do you, how do they do that? And it's the same thing as far as like with, uh, with Coinbase, they just do a bunch of batching. So even if you use Ethereum on Coinbase, if you just do one, it's pretty pricey. But if you have like 10,000 people moving things on the Ethereum layer one and they can batch it, it's like super cheap for them to do. And that's what they did right there. So the, just a little follow up to that piece. Um, but as a reminder, because I don't want to get, I don't want to give people too much hopium, is that, you know, that coffee shop talked about, okay, you can do this and you can pay with this and do NFTs. Almost on the same day, uh, the NFT program from Polygon Labs has been discontinued at Starbucks. So maybe it takes a smaller brand to do it. I don't know. But Polygon apparently paid $4 million to host the Starbucks failed foray into crypto. So they use it like it was a loyalty program, NFT based. And it would have worked pretty well. Polygon is sidechain, ZK rollup. Not for sure if it's if they, they want to classify it as an L2. Maybe I think I always heard hers a side chain. People would have correct me and said, no, no, it's an L2 with a ZK roll. Okay, fine. But with this part, they shut the whole program down. They're like, yeah, we spent $4 million, didn't really get anything out of it. Maybe they got some data. That's about it. So not everything's gonna work in crypto and digital assets. And you just have to accept that. That's just the normal thing. It's just like every business that's out there. And like here's a prime example. Uh Apple just a couple of weeks ago, shut down its electric car project. I don't know if you guys knew this, but Apple, the trillion dollar Apple company, was really trying very hard to break into the EV market for a decade, and they still couldn't do it. So I know everybody's excited about certain projects, this and that, but just know that just like all businesses, not every single one makes it. And just you have no farther to look than to Apple and say, hmm, so when you're deciding on what to invest into, I can give you investment advice, but just remember, yeah, not all these things are actually gonna work and that's where it goes. Anyhow, let me know what you think about that. It's in the comment section. Uh, here's the uh, Dan Degen. And then also lastly, uh, <laughs> this is a funny one. So we also did a deep dive into uh, this. It was a project called Xborg. I linked that in the description underneath here. And just as a follow-up, they're going the last chance to buy Xborg at a discount before it launches on public exchanges is in the next 24 to 48 hours. 8,000 people registered, token supply is 5%, dynamics already 100 million, 15% unlocked at TGE, KYC, yes. And I brought this up because I just think it's a, it's a travesty. If you're in the United States, because of the guy we just talked about in the very beginning, trying to label Ethereum as a security, uh, you can't get into this pre-sale. Anyhow, uh, but if you are outside the United States, not those 19 countries, you can either put 1,000 with a 5% discount, you can go do an X code, which entitles you to 5,000 with a 10% discount. X codes will be distributed to our close partners or a Prometheus chest plate NFT, which you can acquire on Magic Eden, which we'll be talking and doing an education series with them, which is an NFT marketplace uh, coming up in the next couple of weeks. But the reason why I brought this up is because they actually gave me a bunch of codes. And if you go, and there's a link in the description, here's all the export codes if you want to get into that pre-sale and you are outside of the United States, just something to do, something to look at. And just so you know, they've already got eight 
and almost 9,000 wallets and that much interest. And if you're looking to see what that actually is, it's pretty much a DID on Web3. It's a web player ID protocol. There's a link in the description for the actual deep dive video. And that's it for today. And then lastly, lastly, if you are in the San Juan area in the next hour and a half, I'll be doing a quick meetup over at the San Juan Smokehouse. Links in the description, hour, well, hours are hours, but the location is Plaza del Mercado in San Torce. Here's the address. I'll be there, talk crypto, all that good stuff. And again, you can find that link in the description. That's it for today, a little bit long. Sorry about that. That's it for this piece. So if you like today's video, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing. Everything I talk about is time sensitive.